No wind. I don't know what signal I get. Oh, maybe it's the countdown. Oh, the countdown just started. We're good? Okay. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Yeah, put those headsets on. I'm going to try really hard not to yell in your ear. This is very awkward for me to see everybody with headsets. All right. Um, can I just get a fist pump for policies? A little fist pump? Yes, yes. OK, so that's the exciting part. I didn't know I had it. Now I know you really are listening. My name is Bridget Johnson. I am a senior manager in AWS Identity. You may know me from reInvent. I've done um, a bunch of policy talks on IAM policies. So today we're going to dig into one angle of that. I'm really happy to be here at this inaugural event. Like, how cool. You're going to always get to say that you made it to the first reinforce. Um, so I'm pretty excited. OK, this is the next hour for you. So we're going to do a permissions review. How many of you, like, you can raise your hands because you can still hear me and I can still see you, um, have used, written an IAM policy, IAM role, all that sort of stuff? OK, good. That is exactly what I wanted. Um, uh, the permission review is light, so I'm kind of going to expect by the end that you know some policy stuff because we're going to see some JSON. It's going to be great. And we're going to do some demos. It'll be a lot of fun. Then I'm going to introduce ABAC. So this is using attributes to scale your permissions management. And I'll talk a little bit about the model and how to think through it. Then I'll talk about the steps to implementing and applying ABAC in your organization. And then we'll round up with some best practices that you can take back to your organization. And as you start thinking about ABAC and permissions at scale, you can go check against those best practices. All right, I can see all the colors. So if anybody switches colors, I'm going to be slightly offended. And I might kick you out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you can stay, but all right, permissions review. So I talk to a lot of customers. And I tend to talk to security professionals. I tend to talk to central security teams, CIOs, CTOs, all that. And this is what I hear all the time. Hey, we want to give developers freedom. We want them to be agile. We want them to go move and build as fast as they can. Right? You don't know what they're working on. They could be working on healthcare products or getting you know, your streaming content out. But they got to go build, and they got to go build fast. And then there's always this but. But we want to ensure that they um, don't do anything dangerous, or we want to prevent those dangerous actions, or we want to make sure that we always have an admin role that we can control the account with, um, and a little bit of cost control. So this is where we're talking about, hey, first go set up permission guardrails. There's a, a movie I just did on that. There's a couple other people talking about permission guardrails with AWS organizations. Check it out. But the second part to that is once you have those permission guardrails set up into place, then you need to allow some general access that's still granular based on your attributes. And that's where this part comes in. So it always comes down to who has access to what. Does this sound familiar to you all? Nod if like you've always gotten the who has access to what. OK. So the who, I put on here workforce users. and that's. Um, a little too specific, but essentially the who can be an application, it can be a developer, anybody doing data analysis. In today's examples, I'm just going to talk about users. They're humans. They're easy to depict on slides. So just know that, but know that the same models can apply to applications. And then your what. The what is AWS resources. These are your buckets. These are your CloudWatch alarms, your Lambda functions, your secrets and secrets manager. Fun fact, there's over 300 resource types in AWS, right? And so that's a lot of what that you got to control. And the permissions, the part in the middle, that connects it all together. And that permission is very important because that says, for every request to one of those resources, make sure that I have explicitly allowed access. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about that red box. OK, so when you talk about that red box, there's two parts to it. First is your job. Your job, I'm assuming that you've all dealt with some IAM policies. You have access to kind of do permissions. Your job is to specify. You define which entities are allowed to perform which actions on specific actions, on specific resources, under specific conditions. Another fun fact, there's over 4,000 actions in AWS. So we get granular. We're really good at granular. And that's awesome. And so you can specify a bunch of permissions there. The next part is my job. 
literally, I sit there and for every AWS request, I say yes, no, yes, no, yes. I'm just kidding, I don't do that. <laughs> I would not be here today. There's a lot of requests in AWS. But it is AWS's job, right? And so that is for every request that comes in, is that we evaluate based on the policies that you set and we either allow or deny access. There's no middle ground. It's either a yes or no. So that's a little bit of your review. And as we've thought about this, this is the model that we have had historically in the cloud and even on premises, on instances, et cetera, is you have your identities and you grant explicit ac access to a set of permissions, right? So um, you might have a user who is the database administrator and they would have database administrator or the network administrator or a developer. And maybe your network administrator is also your developer. And so you would not combine the two. You would say, oh, you're also allowed to have this role. So this is role-based access control. And role-based access control, this is what it looks like. And this is what you may be used to. Um, and it, it kind of formed from early on, there was ACLs, right? It was point to point. And then eventually, okay, that doesn't work because that doesn't scale. So let's create these permission sets and you give, you assign people permission sets based on it. And so with RBAC, you grant users specific permissions by assigning a collection of roles. So they could have one or they could have multiple, right? Who's an admin that gets to assign, gets assigned like tons of roles and different, the guy, yeah, this guy's like, oh yeah, that's me, I hear ya. Um, and then you can create a distinct role for a unique permission combination. Okay, we get that, all right. New things need to go together, maybe two teams start working together, you create a new combo policy or permission set. When you need to update permissions, you go to that permission set and you add the permission, okay? And that's the part that I'm betting a bunch of people in the audience get stuck doing a lot of, right? You are constantly adding permissions. Every new resource that's created, you got to add a permission. And then to determine access, you go to that permission set, that little box in the middle, and you say, oh, this is, this is what they have access to. With this model, there are parts that are not as enjoyable as you scale, right? For every new resource, you have to go update a policy if you want granular permissions. That becomes cumbersome. And so what the industry, and even years ago, people started to talk about ABAC, using attributes to scale permissions management. And um, we have it, and it's, it's, it's very cool. Um, and it's something better that you can start implementing in AWS and it helps with scale a lot. So this is what it is. You use attributes and then you combine them with general permission rules that scale with your organization. And we're gonna go through that model. So before I go to the model, I wanna make sure we're all aligned on attributes, okay? So it can be a key such as uh, PII compliant, or um, it can be a key such as pickles, that's a project name maybe, um, or it can be production, that is a key, or you can put it as a key and value pair. So that might be, hey, uh, user ID equals our alien friend. There's not very many um, uh, icons I get to use, so aliens are gonna be developers in this presentation. <laughs> or you have team equals unicorn on project pickles. And this is your instance over here where you have project pickles, environment de development, and created by our alien friends. So you can see some similarities, but the keys and the values are a little bit different. So that's what it is, and so when I say a key or an attribute, this is what I mean. It can be defined by your identity provider in some cases, so like an IM, we have a pretty common one like username. Um, or it can be one that you provide, which is custom. And in AWS, the custom ones that you're gonna find are tags. Who's ever tagged a resource? Yes, all right. We love us some tags, so good. Okay, so this is, this is ABAC um, with, instead of multiple lines, you're gonna have one simple line, right? And so you have on your well, left, um, these are your identities and they have attributes. And today I just made them colors to make the slide pretty easy. And that's on your left and on your right you have resources. Guess what? Those also have attributes. And then the middle becomes a really simple rule based on matching. 
is this the same as that allow? Different doesn't work. And so you can write some really general rules that allow you to match. So let's talk about these attributes a little bit. Today, those are your I am users and I am roles in AWS. And those attributes, those tags, are your tags on the I am users and I am roles. That's really powerful. So today you'll see that I go to a role, I'll tag it, project equals pickles. You're gonna understand why pickles is a thing in my brain in just a second. Um, and then you'll get access to a project equals pickles. In the future, yes, I just mentioned in the future, you will be able to pass attributes through from your identity provider using the SAML assertion and put them in your role session. Somebody's fist pumping. I love that. <laughs> um, and those are then put in your permission context and you can write the same policies from that. What that does for you is that makes your identity provider the source of truth. So if you have attributes on your identity provider, then start thinking about which ones you're gonna wanna pass through and require because you can then write permission rules for AWS resources. So as you think, as you look at my demo today, I'm gonna to show you the tags on roles, but imagine what you could do if that same tag that I'm referencing is from your identity provider. And for those of you who run some custom broker stuff, there's a lot of power you can do by inserting things that you get from maybe a DynamoDB table or somewhere as well. So it's an option. All right. So you can kind of start seeing how we're scaling, right? Because now your job is not updating policy, but your job is just making sure the attributes are great and then all the permissions take care of themselves and scale. So what are the benefits of ABAC? So permissions scale with innovation and it enables developers to build, right? And I'm gonna show you at the end of my demo is once they have these permissions, they go create resources, their team can modify resources, they can modify the resource. You don't have to touch the policy in between and that gives you a lot of freedom as an administrator as well. Also teams move fast. Permissions apply automatically. They don't have to create something and then wait for it um, because it's all based on their attributes. And attributes are really quick to change. The other thing is that's powerful is that granular permissions are possible without requiring a permission update every single time, right? And so there's always this tension of, okay, you have too much access or not enough access, et cetera. And so what you can do is based on attributes and it's pretty granular because it's resource and identity specific, but you don't have to update a policy and list an ARN every single time. And then finally, um, to understand who has access to what, you would audit the attributes. And those are pretty locked down in most organizations, and so that's where your identity provider will eventually come into play. So I'm gonna read these sentences. I don't typically read slides, but I'm gonna read them because I'm gonna emphasize a certain word in every sentence. And I want you to pick up on it. And the reason I'm saying this is because I think you all have something in your mind about using tag-based auth, but there's a, there's a power that comes between when you actually have um, uh, identity tags with, as well. So one, grant developers read and write access to their project resources. Require developers to assign their project to new resources. Grant developers read access to re resources that are common to their team. Manage only the resources that I own, right? I didn't put in Project Pickles. I didn't put in Cost Center 1234. I didn't put in any specific attribute. What I did is I referred to the identity's attribute. And this is where the power of matching comes into play. And that's, that's, that's what ABAC is all about. And so realize that then you can create these in policy form and you can create one of them and you can attach it to different roles and eventually you can attach it to the same role and then the, the identities come through um, with their attributes and it just applies based on attributes. Okay, so you're like, all right, Bridget, I got this. I got the attributes on the identities. I got the attributes on the resources and there's matching. How do I put that in my organization? How is that going to play out? Okay, there are five steps. I will tell you that. But the first three are a little bit like set it and forget it. So whenever you think of the first three steps of ABAC, 
please think of rotisserie chicken. Like, I need you to all think about chicken in this moment. I don't know if anyone's seen that re the, the, the infomercial about rotisserie chicken. So one, two, and three, I'm gonna play the admin for a little while, and then I'll switch over and be the alien. But I'm gonna be this woman with a bun. And so the first step is go create your identities with access control attributes. I'm naming them access control attributes for a reason, because these are the attributes you will use for access control. I understand there's a ton of other different types of attributes. I'll talk about that in best practices. Number two is you're going to require attributes for new resources. This means every time our little alien developer friend goes and creates a new resource, that resource during creation gets an attribute. This could be their project, their cost center, both. I don't care. And then finally, we're going to set permissions based on attributes. So this is the management of those resources. So they've created the resource with an attribute, then they get to go, maybe they get to go delete their own secrets, um, or they get to go delete their own instances, or restart their own instances, et cetera. That's all management. OK, then I'm going to put on my developer hat, and this is where we're going to go have some fun. So I'll be a developer, I'll even be alien, and I'm gonna go create new resources. And then I'm gonna um, switch over to another role, and I will be able, I'm gonna play around with resources. And you can see that I can only play around with my resources, I can't play around with those. And we'll, we'll just have some fun there. All right, so this is my demo setup. So Team Pickles, Pickles is my horse. If nobody knew that, now you know. He's a pretty great horse. I, you know, he lives out in the country with his friend, Copy, and I go ride him a few times a week. Um, he's great, so love pickles. Team Bubbles, well, you can all understand what that is. I also love champagne. Two should not be combined. Um, so those are the two teams that we got going, the two projects, that's why. And then I'm gonna demo Secrets Manager. So Secrets Manager is an incredible service. It allows you to turn your long-term credentials into short-term credentials, because we should all be working towards putting short-term credentials everywhere. And so with it, you can set up rotation, you can manage, you can control access, you can audit, a um, lot of power in here. And the plus side is, is anything in AWS that has a, a long-term credential, such as an RDS database, they've already set up rotation for you. And so it's really easy to configure that. And so you're not using post-it notes all the time and whatnot. So if you haven't checked that out, I really highly recommend that you do. All right, so that's set up. Okay, step one. This is we're just gonna go create the role, right? And the only reason I'm gonna show you this is so I can show you where to put the tags. But essentially, I'm gonna, I'm gonna create a, a role for Project Pickles and I'm gonna Tag it with project equals pickles and cost center one, two, three, four. I'm actually not gonna create the bubbles role because it's the same steps, but I do have a bubbles role on my account. And um, so project equals bubbles, cost center 2048. If you are, th I'm gonna give you one second. Where do you think I got 2048 from? Yes, I'm addicted to that game. I play it all the time. I got 2048 the other day. If you haven't checked it out, it's a great mindless game and it really, inspires innovation, not really, but it, it's fun. Um, so demo steps, I'm gonna create just the first role just for time's sake, and I'm pretty sure you all know how to create the role. So here we go. Um, one thing to point out, in Chrome, I'm an admin. I'm the woman with the bun. In Firefox, I am a developer. I'm the alien. So that should make things pretty easy for you. All right, so this is my account. I'm in the zombies account. It's in an organization. Um, and I'm gonna go create a role. So I'm gonna create a role for another account just because it's a little bit easier. Copy that over. Let's imagine you can assume role. That's how I set everything up. I'm actually not gonna add any permissions right now because we're gonna add permissions later because I wanna walk through the policies with you. But I am gonna add tags. So we'll do project is pickles and cost center is one, two, three, four. Next we'll do a review and we'll do project pickles and just today's date because I've done this demo already um, today so I'm gonna add a one just because I practice which is good. 
this grants access to project pickles. All right, so we're just gonna create the role. So that's all you would do. That is you have set up the attributes on that role. And I'll just show you here that they come up right there. Down at the bottom we have our things. You can add more if you want, but those are the two that we're using for access control today. All right, so that was the admin step one. Here we go. If I, get, if I go faster, then I get to play at the end, so. Um. Next, I'm going to create a policy that says for all the new resources that that role creates, they must tag the resource with the project of the role that created the resource. So in that role that I just created, it would be Project Pickles, and same thing with the cost center. So I'm going to, I'm not going to create the policy, I'm actually just going to show you it, I've already staged it, and then we'll attach it, um, and we'll go from there. So Project Cost Center, and then the other thing is, is I want my developer to be able to, to tag with a couple other things, actually a remove created by, but um, application and stage are there. So we'll play with that a little bit. So this is the policy that's there. So I'm going to spend some time here. So this is on the create action. So when I create a secret, one is I must, so this is the string equals, okay? I must pass in a request tag for project and the value must be my project. If there is one thing you take away from this session is, is that you can use the AWS principal tag as a variable on the right hand side of policies. You can use this in ARNs if you name your resources, you can use this in conditions, and you can definitely use it to compare tags. So that's one thing I want you to take away. The other thing I want you to take away is this condition key right here, request tag. When you read the word request, that is a new tag that is being applied. It is different than a resource tag. I will show you resource tag next. So this also says, and you must pass in cost center, and it must be the value of your cost center. No way around it. I cannot create a secret with cost center 2048. I cannot give that cost to another team because my cost center is one, two, three, four. And oh, by the way, you can pass in other tag keys. You can pass in project and cost center, but you also get created by an application. So I'm gonna play around with application towards the end. Okay, let's do this. I think that's all, yeah, that's step three. We'll go to step three next. So I wanna show you the policy that I've already created, um, just because it's faster. So this is um, create secrets with required tags. And I'm just gonna edit the JSON so you can see. And I have the same policy here. And then the only other thing I gave at the end was list secrets. So list APIs typically don't filter based on tags because they're used for the console to go and list all your resources. All it does is give you the, the name. It doesn't give you any metadata or anything about it. Um, so just know that that's usually required for console usability. Okay, um, and I will, the, the next step that you would do is you would attach to the role that you just created. Okay, all right. So now I have this role, which I'll update every now and then because we have a couple policies and you can see that I can create tags with required tags. I'm not gonna go play with the tags yet because I wanna um, show you about managing. All right, we are on to step three. This is the third step of the set it and forget it process. I am going to say, oh, you can manage secrets with the same project tag as the role. And so there's a couple parts to this management. One is gonna be, yep, you can rotate, you can delete, you can get the value of the secret, all that sort of stuff. But there's also the management of, oh, you wanna be able to mess with some of the other tags. So I want the developer to be able to add application blue or application green or yellow, because we love yellow today, but I don't want them to delete the project tag or the cost center tag. And so let's look at those policies. So can we get a fist pump for JSON? Yeah, yeah, all right, love it. 
Okay, so this is all about management, and this is, this, this is very simple, right? Hey, you can do all of these actions. You can describe the secret, you can get the secret value, you can change the value of the secret, you can rotate the secret, all these things. Only if, I'll like bend down here, the resource tag, so that is the tag that exists on the resource. Request tag, new tag you're requesting on a resource resource tag, the resource that exists on the tag. And then once again, equals the principal tag. Only manage resources with these tags. So that's step one. So if I am on Project Pickles, I create a new, a new secret with all of my project tag pickles and cost center one, two, three, four, great. Then I can go and I can rotate it if I want to immediately. All right, this is the other policy. So you want people to be able to tag their resources and you need this permission to actually create the resource with the tag. And we allow very granular tagging permissions. So first says, hey, you can tag a resource, but only if that resource has an existing tag, resource tag, with my project tag, okay? So I can't touch any, I couldn't touch a bubbles tag. I couldn't touch any other team's tag, or resource, secret, sorry. Then I say, all right, but if you pass in a tag key, I need it to be one of these four, all right? And oh wait, if you pass in, so string equals if exists, if you pass in project, the value must be your project, and if you pass in cost center, the value must be cost center, okay? So there's one more layer to this, and this is what do you allow for untag? Do I want them to untag the cost center? No, because the billing team would come yell at me. Do I want them to untag project? No, because that's my access control tag, right? But I don't care if they mess around with application. So allow untag for any secret tagged with my project tag. And oh wait, the only key that I can pass in is application. So I'm gonna go attach all these policies to my new role, and then we're gonna go play and have some fun. All right. So I will just show you the policies here. Um, let's just go with custom. And manage project secrets. So this is the first one, where essentially I can you can kind of see it here on the console, is I can do all these things, but only if it's with the principal tag. Okay? So I'm gonna attach that to our new um, role. Glad that everything's working. And the other one I'm gonna go look at is is manage project secrets. And we'll look at this one to show you. I always give less secrets like I did and then, oh, I just showed you that one. Sorry about that. Clicked on the wrong one. Manage pro secret tags. Okay. And oops, you can see here and we'll look at the JSON. Can you all see that? Yeah. We have the same things. Okay. And then I'll just attach it to the new one that we created. All right. So the only other thing that I'm going to attach here today, um, which I'll show you, is I want to be able to rotate because rotating secrets and secrets manager is a little bit more fun. And so, um, I have granted access, if you can see it, to invoke uh, this, my rotation function, which you can see right here, because Secrets Manager uses Lambda. So I'm gonna just attach that um, to what I got here. Okay. Now, um, I'm gonna do a little bit of a sneaky move, which I'm gonna show you um, the role that I created 
this one. It's the same role. This is the role I already have set up with um, switch roll and everything in Firefox. So it's the same thing, all the, all the same permissions, all the same policies. You can attach that to pickles roll, bubbles roll, etc. So now I am the admin and I have set up everything. So now we get to go be developers and developers get to move fast and they get to innovate and go create all the secrets they want and rotate. So I'm gonna be an alien developer. I'm gonna essentially assume that role that I just showed you. I did that whole like baking show thing where they like, they put all the ingredients together and then they like put it in the oven and then it comes out like two seconds later, a full cake. Yeah, I just have that set up just so you don't have to watch me switch role and everything. Um, I'm gonna go create a new secret. I'm gonna use the role to manage secrets for other secrets that have already been tagged with pickles. I'm gonna try to touch bubbles secrets and then I'm actually gonna um, switch over to bubbles and show you everything, okay? And then I might go rogue and put in some random tags and see what's going on with application and, and playing that. Okay, we're gonna have some fun. All right, I'm in the secrets management console. This is my pickles dev here. We're gonna store a new secret. Okay, I cannot list a bunch of other stuff, that's good. I'm just gonna store a really quick key value pair. So my secret is reinforce. I'm gonna go next. Um, secret reinforce. This is the reinforce secret. I don't know if I can add that. Okay, I'm actually not gonna put any tags on this guy or girl. And I'm not gonna enable rotation. I'll go to the bottom. What's gonna happen? Give me a thumbs up for pass, a thumbs down for fail. Somebody asked a question, no, yeah. All right, we're getting a thumbs down. Failed to create secret. I couldn't do it. Okay, let's try again. Hmm, I remember my admin telling me something about this cost center. So I'm gonna do somebody else's cost center because I don't want this be billed to me. Gonna work? Correct, failed again. I can do this all day, but <laughs> let's actually do the things that we're supposed to do. So project is pickles. This would still fail if I left it at 2048, and I'll do that. Once again, I'm not enabling rotation. It's a pretty simple demo. I'm gonna store. Uh-oh. Unexpected error, that's not good, and I guess you're... All right, my demo is not working. Should I go back? Let's see, previous, previous. I think we're good. If not, I'll just move on. All right. Um, well, now I got to, they didn't get an auth error, but we will try again. Hello, world. Am I good? Okay, thank you. Um, the secret is for pickles. Next. Next. Oops, where are my tags? One, two, three, four. Right. I practiced the demo like five times. All right, so something's not working here, but no worries, it should work. So um, I will, I did use to create a, I don't have secret, list secrets. I'm in Oregon. Okay, let's go secrets tab. Sorry about that. Um, the only thing I can think of is, is that I'm in... Okay, so let's go 
and assume roll in bubbles. Maybe that will work. I thought we were gonna have some fun today, but I guess we're just gonna have errors. So I can list secrets. So this is the bubbles roll. I can show you the bubbles roll here. Everything's there. And I can go into here and you can see that I can see everything. Cost center, project bubbles, cost center 2048, et cetera. And I'm gonna go play with the tags. So I'm gonna try to remove this tag. Will it work? Correct. Failed, so I'm gonna cancel. I am now gonna actually try to edit the application. Will it work? Yeah. Okay, successfully removed. All right, I am going to try to create a secret with bubbles now. Let's see if it works. <laughs> Store a new secret. And we'll do a back demo on um, 625. And I'll just use this all over. We'll do next. Do this. Secret for bubbles this time. Project, and I won't do fail cases because you've seen enough fail cases for me today. Cost center 2048. Next. I'm not enabling rotation. Next. Go through. Also, cool thing, you can get the sample code for your thing. Store, and that worked. So I don't know what was going on before. But does that make sense? So now every time Bubbles creates a secret, um, it's tagged that way. And so you can kind of see in here, oh, this is all that. Now if I'm Bubbles, I won't be able to see anything with pickles. So this is something that I don't have permission to even list, describe, do anything. I can't do anything for that. Um, I could go in here and I should be able to, well, the Bubbles roll doesn't have um, the Lambda on it, but. Let's go play here, see what happens. Maybe I just needed to re-off after I put my computer to sleep. Here we go. And let's rotate the secret, because I can rotate it. Awesome, rotates perfectly great. And let's try to look at a bubbles tag. It doesn't work. So you can see how I'm flipping between bubbles and pickles all the way through, but I can only access the things that I have access to in pickles land. And that's the same policy working for both of those roles that I keep switching back and forth from up here. Um, and that goes through all the, or, all the other stuff. Will I be able to, let's see, I'm pickles. Will I be able to edit this to blue? Does anybody want me to try anything? I know you can't like, you can shout it out awkwardly with your headphones on. What? Okay. All right, so that's, I don't know why it was failing before, but now we got it working with, I think I just had to re-off something about the connection. Um, so that is how it works. And that means that like, if you let somebody else assume the pickles role, they would assign, oh, the other thing we can do, oh, let's do this. Okay, now I wanna have fun. Um, let's change the tag. What do you think? Okay, so what we can do here is I'm actually gonna go to the roles of pickles. And I'm gonna change the tag. This is risky behavior because this is to um, bubbles. All right, what do you think? Am I gonna be able to go hang out with bubble secrets? Think so. It's all there. I can, I can view it, I'm not gonna show you, but I can see all the tags, I can see all the data. It's all there. Can I see pickles? Oh, shouldn't be able to see pickles. Might be cached. Let's try this one. That's bubbles. Well, 
maybe that demo doesn't work. Cost center is one, two, three, four. It's pickles. Let me go there and go back. Man, I was supposed to have some fun. There we go. So it was just cash for a little bit in the console. Cool. Y'all get it? It's all about the attributes. See, I changed the attribute on that, on that role and it changed the permissions. It took a little bit while to propagate, but it worked there. I was probably working too fast. Okay, let's go back to the presentation. All right, so I've done the whole setup, admin, set it and forget it. I became the developer, I played around, showed you where I messed up a couple times. Um, changing policy and tags do have to, you know, they take a little bit, but I was moving too fast. That's fine. And now we're gonna talk about best practices. So there are five of them that I'm gonna share with you today. And of those five, um, these are the ones I want you to take back to your organization. I actually want you to care about the first one the most, okay? So you've probably all operated in AWS for a while and you could tag things and one of our principal engineers likes to call it willy-nilly tags, but you tag them left, right, up and down with everything you want. Start thinking about which tags you are going to use for access control. And do not mix these with other types of tags like cost allocation tags or description tags or whatever. Seriously think about which tags you're gonna use for access control. And start planning that out and making sure that everyone has the appropriate permissions to tag on create with them like I just demonstrated as well as um, uh, not mess with those tags. That brings me to my second point, only approve entities or identities, humans, should be able to update a tag. I am not going to allow people to just, oh, secrets manager, create tag for all resources or untag for all resources. That means they could go kill my project tag. That means they could change the value of tags, which means they could gain access to it. So be very careful about who gets to change the values and the, what tags are on resources. All right, third one is tag everything during creation so permissions apply automatically, okay? So you wanna make sure that everything, like I said, when I created it, when I eventually got it to create with Bubbles, those were, okay, Bubbles is actually going to uh, create resources with that tag. And then anybody who was operating with Bubbles on a tag on their role could go and then play with it. Four is rely on attributes to grant permissions to manage resources. This allows you to scale, right? This allows you to only put that one line that says, hey, if it matches, let it through. If it doesn't match, don't go through. And, and that's what you want for managing permissions. And then finally, periodically audit those attributes. Um, people do it all the time with their identity providers or, or even their tags on resources. So spend some time when you go through and audit and find the things in between. Okay, last thing I wanna call out is one, if you want some more information about this, my reInvent talk, become a policy master in 60 minutes or less. This talks through permission guardrails, it talks through ABAC, it talks through a bunch of other um, permission boundaries, all that. Uh, Service specific permissions documentation. So one thing I didn't talk about today was that there is a growing number of services that support tag on create and tag based auth. All those things are required to do ABAC. And so you can go to this page, it is the page I visit most in the docs, and you can say, okay, I'm trying to do something in Secrets Manager, right? And oh, does their create secret support tags or re request tag, resource tag, you look for those two conditions and you can see. So you, it's, it's split up by service and you can see what's been updated. And then finally, um, somebody actually just published a blog on the AWS security blog, all about implementing ABAC. They didn't necessarily call it ABAC, we're working on that, but um, it's all about <laughs> principal tags and, and using principal tags to grant access. So I wanna thank you for your time today. I will be over in this corner answering questions once I break down my laptop and everything. And then one thing I did have to say, sorry, Follow AWS Identity. That's where you're going to see all the stuff on ABAC and permissions and all that sort of stuff. And if you want to, you can follow me on Twitter, bjohnso5y.
Thank you. And finally, I do read these. I read every single comment that comes through because it's the only way we improve our content. So you can put in there, hey, her demo didn't work, but you know, I did a live demo. I could have given you a video. But anyway, uh, it was fun. I had a good time. Uh, Hands-on keyboard type of thing. So please submit the survey. Thank you.